pray together this morning. Thank you, precious Lord. Precious Father, this morning, as we are gathered in your presence, we honor you for the gift of the beginning of a fresh chapter. The first Sunday of a brand new year. Honoring you, O oh God, that your presence will go ahead of us again this year. And that through the changing scenes of life that we might face, we know that you are the Lord who will never leave nor forsake us. Teach our hearts this year to fear you. Teach our hearts to honor you. Teach our hearts to trust you. Teach our hearts that you are the Lord who fights our battles for us. This year, in the name of Jesus, I silence every arsenal of the enemy against the people of God. In the name of Jesus. No weapon of the enemy that he tries to fashion against the people of God this year shall stand in the name of Jesus. This year, I command every altar to be rendered powerless in the name of Jesus. Father, let this be the year of uncommon grace, uncommon favor, uncommon breakthrough, supernatural health, open heavens, uncommon blessings. Let it come over your people and let it overtake them. This year, I decree that families, O oh God, shall not be separated. There shall be no divorce at TBC in the name of Jesus. There shall be no premature death here at TBC in the name of Jesus. Our children shall enter the best universities. They shall enter the best grammar schools. They shall attain the best grades. Our businesses, O oh God, shall arise above the ordinary. Our worship, O oh God, shall be the best. Teach each one of us, O oh God, this year to do our best to honor you. Let the fear of God rise us, lift us above every storm of the enemy. And above all, Father, I pray that this year, grant us grace to understand your word. May revelation knowledge be our portion this year. In the mighty name of Jesus and God's people shall say, Amen. Kindly turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Proverbs, chapter 19. I read just a verse. It is impossible to fear God and remain the same. It is just not possible. Proverbs 19, verse 23. The Bible says, The fear of the Lord leads to life. And he who has it will abide in satisfaction. And thirdly, he will not be visited with evil. May this be your portion in the name of Jesus. Our theme this year is the fear of of the Lord or the fear of God. And this morning I'm beginning with an introduction to the studies. The truth about our walk with God is that as we study our scriptures from Genesis through to Revelation, we see the hand of God in the lives of individuals who literally changed the course of history, brought the intervention of God into situations demonstrated the acts of God and changed the thinking of their generation simply because of their fear of God. We see in the Bible God saying, can I do anything without telling my friend Abraham? Abraham was a man that feared God. And because of his fear of God, God said, there is no way that I will overthrow Sodom and Gomorrah without telling my friend Abraham. Abraham. And in Genesis 18, from the, uh, Genesis 18 through to the verse 33, we see the hand God literally bargaining with Abraham. 
we see Moses in Exodus chapter 14 stretching forth his hand, his rod over the Red Sea and the Red Sea parting in two. Moses stands before the people of God and tells them, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians that you see today, you will no longer see them forever. For the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. In 2015, the Lord will fight for you. As you stand still and fear God and obey his commandments, you will see the salvation. You will see the hand of the Lord in 2015 in the name of Jesus. All the battles that you had that warred against you, the illnesses that were against you in 2015, stand still in 2015, in 2014, that fought against you in 2014, stand still. And in 2015, you shall see them no more in the name of Jesus. We see Job having a double restoration of all that he lost because of his fear of God. We see Enoch being translated without tasting death because of his fear of God. For the Bible says that before he was taken, Enoch had this testimony that he pleased God. It pays not only to trust God, to fear God, but also to please him. We read about Elijah, a man who in his generation did not only demonstrate the power of God, but feared God and stood his ground for God. And we literally see him commanding fire from heaven. The God that answered by fire, let him be God. Through our scripture, we see the acts, the demonstrations of God, the power of God in the lives of people who dared to fear God. That is why I'm so convinced that this year, God will do something supernatural for you. Oh, you are not here today. Elisha died. And when he was being buried, as they dug the grave and they threw the dead man in, when the, the body touched the bones of the dead Elisha, the guy who had died, resurrected. And literally, they were running away from the enemy. So the issue then was, who were they going to run away from? Were they going to run away from the dead man who had come back to life, running with them? Or from the enemies who were pursuing them? Even in death, there was fire in the bones of Elisha. That is how deep it is to fear God. In your fear of God, after 100 years when your time is gone, uh, uh, your, your, your time is past and God calls you into glory, your presence and your walk with God will still linger over your generation and your children's children in the name of Jesus. Up to today, the children of Israel are basking in the promise that God gave to Abraham. That simple blessing that your descendants shall possess the gates of his enemies simply because of the faith of Abraham in his work with God. We see Joseph's hand prospering over anything that he touched and did. Why? Simply because the Lord was with him. If you fear God, God will eternally tabernacle with you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? If the fear of God is over your life, whatever you lay your hands to do shall prosper in the name of Jesus. We see God showing up in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because of their fear of God. They will not bow to the idolatry of their generation. And as such, when they were cast into the fire, the fire had no power to burn them. Instead, the fourth man showed up in the name of Jesus. In 2015, because of your fear of God, the fourth man will show up. His face radiates with the glory and with the power of God. When the fourth man walks with you, oh, glory to God. We see maps of lions being shut because of Daniel's fear of God. 
we see the shadows of the apostles falling on the sick and they receiving their healing in the name of Jesus. We see aliens having their names being included in the lineage of the Messiah's ancestry. Why? Simply because of their fear of God. We see prostitute Rahab and Mary Magdalene being mightily used by God because of their fear of God. We see madras, madras, madras receiving a second chance because of their fear of God. You see, it is not about how you start, but it is about how you finish. And this year, for each one of us, God is giving us a clean new chapter. That if we would diligently fear him and hearken to his word, nothing shall be impossible unto us this year in the name of Jesus. There were total transformation over the life of all those who dare to pay a price to fear God. This year, you and I will walk in the fear of God. Like the saints of old, may, he, may God work a tangible miracle. You see, this year, my prayer for each one of us is that God will so much work a tangible miracle over your life that your enemies will have no choice than to clap for you. Because they look at this and they say, this is nothing else than the hand of God. They will know this is nothing than the finger of God. And as you diligently and faithfully walk with God and fear him, oh, may the Lord do something for you. May the Lord put all the pieces back together again. Anything that was broken by virtue of your fear of God, may the Lord put it back again in the name of Jesus. Oswald Chambers, one of the great men of the 21st century, wrote and said, the, re the remarkable thing about fearing God is that when you fear God, you fear nothing else. Whereas, if you do not fear God, you fear everything else. How true he was. If you fear God, there is nothing for you to fear. But if you don't fear God, then you will get up with talismans over your waist, over your hands, in your mouth, and all kinds of idols in your room. But if you fear God, then you will know that besides God, there is no other God. And this year, by God's grace, we'll be looking at the fear of, the, of God and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You see, if God gives you a gift of discernment or a gift of prophecy, if God gives you a, a gift of discernment or the word of knowledge and he reveals something about somebody to you, if the fear of God is over your life, you will use it wisely. The only reason why these prophets are deceiving and manipulating people of God is simply because there is no fear of God over their lives. And by the way, most of them are operating with familiar spirits anyway. So you see that their first sign always is to intimidate you, to put fear on you so that you will also be dependent on them. Tell your neighbor, I will not fear man, but I will fear God. If you fear God, there's no need to fear anything. You don't need to put a cross under your bed. You don't need to put a photograph in your room. You don't need to put sprinkle your car with water. If you fear God, his presence tabernacles with you. Huh? Elisha feared God so much that even when he died, there was fire in his bones. When you fear God, the demons, they see you, the witches, they see you, and they run. Huh. They say, hey, how, 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 have we said anything about you? This has nothing to do with you. They know that there is something about your life, and that is the fear of God. Don't allow any uneducated moron to deceive you. I see the 
can take professors to the beach and, and bath. You don't know how to bath? Ah! Oh, professors! And it's all because there is no fear of God. So we will look at the fear of God and the gifts of this year. There's, don't miss church one Sunday. Because I'm believing God that you'll be so much informed with the revelation knowledge that at the end of the year, oh, you tell the devil, bring it on. Yeah. Huh? Because you know for sure that a thousand will fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand side, they will fight against you. They will come in one way, they will flee in seven ways. Regardless of the weapons that they shoot against you, it will not work. Because if the fear of God is over your life, the Lord tabernacles with you. And if God be for you, listen, you plus God equals majority. When Gehazi was shaken by virtue of the Syrian enemy, enemy that has surrendered their cave, he saw it and his feet began to knock together. When his master tried to convince him, he, he wouldn't understand because he couldn't see. Then he prayed a very simple prayer. Lord, open his eyes. Then he saw chariots of fire. And this year, may the chariots of fire go with you and come back with you. Yeah. I didn't hear you. I said, may the chariots of fire go with you and come back with you. May the enemy this year know you are untouchable. Because you've made a quality decision to fear God and to walk with him. I'm not afraid of any demon. I have so many in my home. The other plenty. All those who have not given their lives up, they have rendered their lives useless. But I have made a quality decision to stand with God. Me, I have no desire to make money out of church. I have no desire to manipulate any congregation. I have no desire in life to be famous. I have no desire whatsoever to corrupt my calling. But my determination is to work with God. Jesus. You won't die before your time. Amen. We will look at the fear of God and commitment. The fear of God and stewardship. We will look at the fear of God and leadership. The fear of God in a marriage and family. If you fear God, you will treasure your wife. If you fear God, you will treasure your husband. If you fear God, you will handle your family differently. We will look at the fear of God and relationships. If you fear God, you will not handle the handiwork of God. You will not treat people like animals. You will not walk over people. You will treat people with dignity. You will treat people as you want others to treat you. When you open your mouth to talk to people, it will be seasoned with salt. Your words shall drip with honey. Your words shall be like the honeycomb. Because you fear God. You don't live your life anyhow. You can't fear God and be sleeping around with women. You won't do that. We'll be looking at the fear of God and holiness. If you fear God, you respect your neighbor's wife. You respect your friend's wife. You won't even look at her with lust. Yes. 
We will look at the fear of God and missions and evangelism. We will look at the fear of God in integrity. We will look at the fear of God and prosperity. I want you to know that it is God's intention to prosper you the right way. Because when God prospers you, no, 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 he has no sorrows to wait. I know rich people who can sleep. I had a brother who was so rich, but he could never sleep two hours in a day. So rich! What will it profit a man? If you gain the whole world, always fearful, always looking behind him. From one prophet to another prophet. Listen, prophets, they will break your family. They will break your relationship with God. They will distort your relationship with people that can help you. They are dangerous. Those false prophets. Anything that doesn't build is not of God. Anything that inspires fear is not of God. We will look at the fear of God and forgiveness. If you fear God, you will forgive Pastor K. Because you, you understand that Pastor K is human. And, and the truth about life is that whichever way we look at it, we will offend ourselves. But if the fear of God is in you, you will forgive as God in Christ Jesus also forgave us. We will look at the fear of God and humility. You can't walk in pride if you fear God. We will look at the fear of God and obedience. The fear of God and divine intervention. I love that one. Ah. How God intervened on the behalf of people who walked with him. My goodness. We will look at the fear of God and altars. We will visit the altars again. If you fear God. Then we will look at the fear of God and brokenness. And then we'll look at the fear of God and the soon coming of Christ. Understand that the man and the woman that God uses are those who genuinely fear God. Understand that in life, our attitude towards something will determine how we act towards that issue. Our choices shall be in line with their disposition. If you believe that something was healthy, and good for you. Of course, why not? You eat that cereal. But if you know that something is poisonous, there's no way that you will touch it. It's true or false. Except that you become ignorant that car food is not good for you. Then you will eat it. I, you know, I used to love it, you know. Till uh, a professor spoke to me. So he asked me a very simple question. Kingsley, is it about the taste? A Ghanaian nutritionist professor. Is it about the taste or is it about the softness? Then he started to propound some theories to me and said, have you seen that in all the Western world, car food is always thrown away? Then people just <laughs> pick it up Put it in the fire and, 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 and eat it. Then he said, with animals, when they are injected, all the residue just drips down and it's all in the feet. And it is one of the major reasons you should never... Then he said, it has no nutritional value. It doesn't add anything. It is, uh, it is total fat, unhealthy, unsaturated fat. Hey! I said, hey! But you know that wache and car food, oh! Man! Huh? Don't eat car food, too. The truth is that your belief will guide your action. A Christian who does not fear God will not be used by him because he will not live for him. The truth about scripture is that we do not read many stories where God's attention rested on, on entire communities. Instead, 
God's attention will find individuals who set the pace or stood in the gap and changed their times simply because they feared God. God this year is looking for a man. He is looking for a woman. God is looking for a boy. God is looking for a girl. May that be you in the name of Jesus. To understand the fear of God, it is important we get a clear knowledge of how the word is translated both in scripture and also in the dictionary. Webster's dictionary, I find the definition to be the best says that f- defines fear as a feeling of anxiety and agitation produced by the presence of danger, evil, or pain. This is the feeling you get when you see a snake or go to a dentist. Or when you find yourself in extreme danger, it is the dread of the unknown. Naturally, if you are afraid of snakes and you see snakes, something happens to you. And, and you know, there is a form of fear that is good. If none of us has a form of fear, then if you see a snake, you try to walk towards a snake. But naturally, the disposition of, of, of any man when you see a poisonous snake is to just run for your life. Or find a stick and face it. But in the scripture, one word that is used, one of the words is the word mora. Which means a fearful thing, something dreadful. And in Genesis chapter 9 verse 2, God said to Noah, And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be on every beast of the earth, on every bed of the air." On all that move on the earth and all and on all the flesh of the sea they are given into your hand. In other words, God is saying that over your life he has placed a divine fear. So that anything that sees you that is a beast or an animal must flee from, from you. So naturally The only reason why we see snakes and we are running away is because of the fallen nature of man. And the truth is that man in his wisdom has been able to tame every animal. You know people live with snakes as pests. It is tamed. Then there's another word, jira, which means dreadful or exceeding fear. God, you know, Abimelech was a man who did not fear God and anything beautiful must not cross his eyes. So there was famine in uh, Israel. As a good man, Abraham takes his wife to Egypt. And the moment Abimelech saw Sarah, ah, take Sarah and ask her to a concubine. Then that night, the Lord appears to Abimelech and he causes him to dream. And in that dream, God says to him, Genesis 20, 11, that you are a dead man. From Genesis chapter 20 through to verse 11, he says, you are a dead man. Return that man's wife to him. So he comes back to Abraham. He says, Abraham, what, what have you done to me? What have I done wrong? And you know, the truth about God is that when he appears to Muslims, when he appears to people who do not fear God, they are able to see him better. And this is so strange. And at times God appears to we the believers and we are still stiff. Because God has become familiar. So Abimelech runs to Abraham and said, Abraham, what is this? Then Abraham said to him, because I taught, verse 11 of Genesis 20, surely the fear of God is not in this place that they will kill me on account of my wife. The wife was so beautiful. You know, Sarah's beauty was internal and also outward. You saw Sarah, you knew this was a gracious woman. May the Lord make your wife gracious in the name of Jesus. And when you see your wife, may you see that beauty in her. Beauty is in the eye of the heart. It depends how you look at your wife. She can be the Miss Well. Or you can say whatever you want. But may your wife be misworld in the name of Jesus. Because there will never be any woman like your wife. Then there is the word pashad. Which refers to sudden alarm, sudden panic or emotional fear. 
In Psalm 1, 1, verse 1 and 20, the Bible says, My flesh trembles for fear of you, and I am afraid of your judgments. This is the fear that comes from recognizing who God is and his righteousness in judging sin. But the word that is used very often for the fear of God in scripture is the word yara. It means to stand in awe, to revere God, and to respect God. The psalmist, Psalm 33 verse 8 says, Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. This is reverence to God. When God appeared to the children of Moses in tenderness and likeness, they were fearful. But God only appeared to them that way to test them. And this word is used 330 times in the Bible, the word Yara, which simply means reverential fear of God. To, see, to look at God and his creation to say, wow. The proper kind of fear is that which causes one to stand in awe, to revere, and to respect God. The Old Testament uses the word phobia. In the New Testament, it means also to have a referential fear of God, which comes from our understanding of who God truly is. This is when we recognize God as almighty, as the omniscient God, the God who knows all things, as the omnipresent God, the God who is everywhere at the same time, and as the omnipotent God, the God who is powerful. That is when you look at God's creation, the beauty of his handiwork, and say to yourself, as you see the oceans roar and sink. I, I will never forget, we visited Tobago last year. One of our members was getting married, Joshua Sian, who has now become one of the most influential men in Africa. And the Atlantic, where the ceremony was held, was above the Atlantic. And as the Atlantic Ocean rolled and, and, uh, and uh, as the tide came and went and you look at the beauty and the stillness of the ocean, nobody should tell you this is God's creation. So the fear of the Lord is to hold God in reverence, to recognize that he is the creator and that we are his creatures, that he is the master and we are the servant. This reverential awe and admiring submissive fear is foundational for all spiritual knowledge and wisdom. So the fear of the Lord is a state of mind in which one's own attitudes, will, feelings, deeds, and goals are exchanged for God. Genuine fear of God is always seen in obedience to the word of God. Hallelujah. The psalmist, Psalm 33 again says, let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Let me jump quickly to the benefits of the fear of God. And everything I'm saying here, we'll be picking them one by one and we'll be looking at them in detail. The first benefit of the fear of God is that it gives us the right knowledge. <coughs> The first benefit of the fear of God is that it gives us the right knowledge. Proverbs 1, 7, the Bible says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. You see, there are two kinds of knowledge. We have sense knowledge and we have revelation knowledge. And, and sense knowledge are the things we are taught at school that we are taught in the university, things that come to us because of our five senses. And all the things that we learned at school, the atoms, the molecules, and all those things are based on the five senses. And the truth about sense knowledge is that it can never give us reason for creation. That is why the professors will tell you, there is no God. Because the truth is that the sense of man is not enlightened enough to understand God. Somebody with me today. 
The truth is that natural man cannot understand spiritual things. But revelation knowledge comes from God, from the word of God, that liveth and abideth forever. This is inspired by the Holy Spirit through the act of grace. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through to 10, that eyes have not seen, nor ears heard. Neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that fear him. Then the verse 10, 10 tells us, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. You see, it takes the revelation of God by faith to understand that the world was created by things that are not. If not, <laughs> You're, you're, you'll be asking some unnecessary questions. And the truth is that your sense will never be able to understand them. But the fear of God brings revelation knowledge. And I pray that this year, may the revelation knowledge of God be your portion in the name of Jesus. So you will discover that in this age, the devil uses the world's ideas, that is sense knowledge. He uses the morality of the world, the philosophies of the world, the culture of the world, the educational systems of the world, the desires of men without God, science and art without God, medicine without God, music without God, economic systems without God, entertainment and the mass media without God, religions without God, and agriculture without God to oppose God, his word and religious standards. It takes the fear of God to use knowledge wisely. It takes revelation knowledge to use to understand that the gifts that God has given for us for music is to sing to honor him. Else, you see that what the devil has done is to twist the gift of music. Women dress half naked and dance in all kinds of dances. It takes revelation knowledge to let you understand that is not of God. It takes the fear of God to use agriculture wisely. To use culture wisely. There are good things in culture. But the truth about culture without God is that it is dangerous. Instead of giving the honor to God, people will pour libations. It takes the fear of God to use the mass media wisely. Else, we promote fear, propaganda, and hatred. And you will discover that now, every breaking news is bad news. If the news is not bad, it is not good news. Every breaking news, disaster. Somebody is in trouble. There is danger. Then it becomes breaking news. That Billy Graham has held a crusade and thousands of people, no, 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 that's not good news. That will never come on the breaking news. The devil has used sense knowledge to twist and, and, uh, and, and a desire to deceive. But the fear of God is the beginning of the right no, 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 knowledge. Understand that whereas medicine is a gift of God and has over the years improved the life expectancy of so many people. There are those also who, because of the lack of the fear of God, will use medicine, the medical profession, to kill unborn children through abortion. As much as knowledge about agriculture has been good and uh, now food is being produced on life scale, the truth also is that those without the fear of God are using agriculture to produce, to destroy life through drugs such as alcohol, cigarettes, and narcotics. And understand that all these come from plants. It takes the knowledge of God to refrain. That is why no believer should be a drug peddler. It takes the fear of God to stay away from that quick money. The devil is using the education systems to produce ungodly humanistic philosophies that there is no God and that the world came into being because of the Big Bang. 
sensual knowledge without God is dangerous. Today, entertainment has been totally taken over by the enemy. And let these pop stars, and look at their lifestyles. One of them went to Ghana. He was paid $1 million to perform and to smoke Indian hemp on stage. And was given $1 million. But when Christians write songs that edify and bring honor and glory to God, the same press will turn around and tell them they, want, they like money. The fear of the Lord helps us to restrain ourselves and to know that there is a power behind the scenes that works for our good, that there is a God who hates anything that seeks to destroy his creation. But the second benefit of the fear of God is that it helps you to gain wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One, the Bible says, is understanding. Proverbs 9.10 You see, you use the knowledge that is acquired wisely to the benefit of not only yourself, but also for mankind. You approach life from God's point of view. You act wisely before things happen. You know what to do because God helps you. May he give you the right ideas for investment this year in the name of Jesus. The third benefit of the fear of God is that it leads to contentment. 1923 says, the fear of the Lord leads to life and he who has it will abide in satisfaction. You see, if you have the fear of God, you will be satisfied with whatever your Lord. Because you have learned to sing and to say that it is well with my soul. Life does not consist in the abundance of riches and money that we have. You discover quickly at a certain age that all is vanity. Oh, is somebody here today? You realize that life is meaningless without God. But godliness with, that, with contentment is great gain. Paul said to his son Timothy, 1 Timothy 1, 6 through to 7, that godliness with contentment is great, is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, but it is certain that we will carry nothing. You know, when babies are born, you see how they cry. You know what they are saying? Give me, give me, give me, give me. But when our time is up, 100 years, and God calls us, our hands are like this. Nothing in our hands. And the truth is that we must learn the secret of contentment. Whether we like it or not, God has not made everybody to become a billionaire. Are you hearing me? God has not made everybody to become a millionaire. But God has made some to become millionaires and billionaires. And, I, and I've heard many of these false, false uh, 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 prophets, this year you'll be a billionaire. Oh, really? And the people will shout, Amen! Who doesn't want to be a billionaire? But God doesn't work that way. But what God does for you is that your hands will never beg in the name of Jesus. He will supply you with all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And you will never be poor in the name of Jesus. You will not be at the bottom of the ladder in the name of Jesus. That is when even when you don't have it, people see you differently. If not, if there is no fear, people are literally sleeping in coffins to become rich. People are sleeping. They literally go to the cemetery. They dig somebody's grave. Take the corpse off. Sleep in it for an hour. Come out with the intention they will be rich. It's a stupidity. Lord, excuse me to use that word. Total trash. If you don't know God, that is how low you can stoop. May the Lord himself make you rich. May the Lord bless the work of your hands. May the Lord show you all the treasure in the secret places in the name of Jesus. This year, may the Lord himself open the heavens over your head and order your steps into his uncommon blessings in the name of Jesus. It is the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and ask no sorrow. Solomon writes and says, 
Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Hey, he says, because he, Solomon is saying, at my table there was a time I was offering about a hundred bulls a day besides the deers and the bushmeat. I was offering all these things on my table one day. Well, women, he had a thousand of them. But when he became old, he says, hey, it is vanity upon vanity. And let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. And he says, it is this, fear God, number one. Keep his commandment, for this is the whole duty of man. And that is the truth. The truth is that fear God. When you fear God, God knows what is good for you. Then he starts giving you business ideas. Then he starts up making the right connections for you. Walk with God. Trust God. Put your faith in him. Huh. David says, I was young and I'm old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor he sees going about. But students, no matter what, as you go to university, they will say, you trust God and fear God. Amen. I am telling you, they will be looking at you with a second eye. And they will know you are different. Amen. And I'm saying that to you because I've been there. The conclusion of the matter is that fear God. Keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. But the fourth thing about the fear of God is that it prolongs life. The fear of God prolongs days. Proverbs 20, 27. But the years of the wicked will be shortened. We will look at how this works. But finally, no, two more. Six, number five, it, produce, it produces safety. The fear of the Lord, Proverbs 9, 23, leads to life. He who has it will abide in satisfaction. He will not be visited with evil. The truth about the fear of God is that if you fear God, God says you will not be visited with evil. So that means you will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrows that flyeth by day. God himself is saying, I will shelter you between my wings in the name of Jesus. But number six, it brings prosperity. Proverbs 22, 4 says, By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. God's plan for you is that it will be well with you. God gives you the plans and he gives you that prosperity. It is the prosperity of the Lord that has no sorrows. May he give that to you in the name of Jesus. L let me end with an article that my wife gave me yesterday. Understand that When you talk about a brand, you talk about the quality of that product. When you talk about Mercedes-Benz, you are talking about a quality car, a car that is reliable. I'm not advertising for them. I'm only preaching. And a car that will last. If, when you talk about Toyota, you are talking about reliability and engine that will last. One thing about Toyota cars is that the body may be weak, but you start... The, during winters, whilst people are looking for jump starts and are pushing their cars, you start your Toyota, off it goes. Because that is how good the engines are. Some cars, you have to push them. When you talk about Vodafone, you are talking about a brand. When you talk about O2, you are, of course, you are talking about a brand. When you talk about Apple, Mac, you are talking about a brand. You are talking about uh, uh, laptops that are specially well made. You talk about iPhone, you are talking about quality phones that are so simple to use. iPad, I'm using it to preach. Because of the iPad, now my wife does, does not have to worry herself with tapping my nose. Because it's made typing so easy for everybody. When you talk about Billy Graham, you are talking about a brand of Christianity with integrity. Is somebody hearing me? And understand that as a child of God, God wants to br you to become a brand for his glory this year. Amen. And therefore he sent Jeremiah and he said, go to the potter's house and I will cause you to hear the word of the Lord. When you go and read Jeremiah chapter 18. And when he went, he saw the potter at work. 
spinning his leg on the wheel. And when the clay in the hand of the porter was mad, the, the porter did not throw it away. He put it back on the wheel and started spinning it again till he made something beautiful, he, till he molds it into what he loved. Understand that your life and my life is still on the wheel. God hasn't finished with us yet. And what God is doing is that he's molding us for his own honor and for his own glory. Praise the Lord. That is why you must not underestimate yourself. That is why you must not judge somebody. That is why you must not think that it is impossible for you to fear God. That is why you must not give up on yourself. Understand that the, the foot that is on that pedal is God himself. Had it been the devil, the first time there was a mistake, he would have cast you away. But it is God himself and God has not finished with you yet. God is molding something beautiful out of your life. All what you have to do in the hand of the potter as a clay is to be still. Is to look at this God in wonder and in reverence. And know that as he spins and as he molds you. And you remain calm and fear him and are obedient in his hand. You this year will become a poem that will be recited. Amen. And I pray in the name of Jesus that may your life become a poem that will be recited this year in the name of Jesus. Because of the fear of God over your life, may you leap over every challenge this year. May the Lord himself go ahead of you as you fear him and fight your battles for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. Glory to God. Let's pray. Father, we honor you for this morning. We honor you for your word. We honor you for your faithfulness. I pray, my Lord and my God, that this will be the best year we have ever experienced in proportion to all the years that we have experienced. Teach our hearts to fear you this year. Teach our hearts to understand how to walk with you in the fear of God. And above all things, O oh God, may your fear be our portion and standard in the mighty name of Jesus. God's people shall say,